Learn how to be alone to maximize productivity and focus. This is the pilot's mindset. What I'm about to tell you is based on what I have seen, experienced and read. Like I said, this is the pilot's mindset, but no matter your background or your occupation, this can be implemented in your life and you will definitely be able to relate. Gym, fly JV tank top for the gym. It's dope, huh? Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so fly JV gang, fly JV hoodies available, fly JV tank top, t shirts, everything, man. Get your merch right now, my guys. Sky's home, be limitless, bro. <laughs> Becoming a pilot, I've had to make a lot of sacrifices. I've had to leave home. I've had to go to a flight school that was overseas and I have to experience a different culture. I moved from a completely different continent into Europe where I had never lived, where I knew nobody, had no friends, and the culture was completely different from how I was brought up and how I've lived my entire life. However, I came there with a mission. And my power of will, my ambition, my drive were at an all-time high. I knew what I want, I visualized it, and I manifested it. And nobody could ever stop me. Every single one of us on this planet Earth have greatness within us. However, you need to make certain sacrifices to be able to tap into that greatness. Which brings us into investment. Your life is the way it is right now because of investments that you made. Investments are essentially sacrificing something for the chance of receiving something else. It is a gamble. But without taking that risk, you are still making an investment. Just this time, you are investing your time to stay in the same place. See, if you invest something valuable to you for something that you perceive as more valuable, there's always a chance of you ending up in a place lower than where you started. But there's also the chance of obtaining what it is that you were shooting for in the first place. So you have to look at failure differently. Failure is not the opposite of the win, it is a step towards winning. Failure brings experience. Experience brings skill, and skill brings competence. Competence, in turn, brings confidence. And the list continues until you get that win. I talked about the importance of confidence in a previous video, so make sure to go watch that if you haven't already. Ultimately, you can only reach greatness when you genuinely stay true to yourself. No noise, 100% congruence. But Fly JV, I want to increase my productivity, I want to increase my focus. Keep listening, I am getting to that. The only way to know what you want is to know who you are, your actual identity. I'm not a psychologist, but trust me when I tell you that a huge number of people on this earth do not truly know who they are. And on a certain level, we are all trying to understand ourselves more. There is a difference between someone on the way to finding his true self and someone who is not even aware that he's simply going through the motions of life. This brings us into being alone, by yourself. Being alone is important, and you can never understand that when you are always surrounded by people. Now understand this, 
It is essential for a human being in the early stages of his life to be nurtured by his parents, to have a support system, and to be close to other people. But as you grow up, you make friends and you feel the need to belong, to have a team, a group, a pack, if you will. But also, it is important to have your identity, your own identity, to stand out instead of fitting in due to your fear of not belonging. Being alone will force you to understand how you think and how your brain processes information. You will learn things you never knew about yourself because you will be put in certain situations that you never had to face by yourself. And that will give you a more accurate measure of what you are capable of and what you need to work on. And when you realize the multitude of things you can do by yourself, you will start putting in work for real because suddenly your vision will become a lot more clear. Because you will understand what you want. Know what other people have programmed you to think. Know what social conditioning tells you you should do. Know what the inner voice which people have implanted inside of your head says what you want. Being alone leads to introspection. Introspection leads to reflection and reflection leads to understanding. Last but not least, understanding leads to action. And ultimately you can achieve nothing if you do not take action. Your brain will always be resistant to change because you are wired to stay in your comfort zone. Your brain subconsciously tries to maintain you in the same place because it believes what you are currently doing is working because you are surviving, you are eating, you are sleeping and you are safe and that must mean that you are employing an effective way of living. However nowadays, success is different to what it was back when you had to hunt for food and bring it back to the tribe. You need to force change with action and force that habit. How do you force change? By extreme and daily visualization and manifestation, but most of all, putting yourself first. Me leaving where I came from and going overseas to a flight school where I knew nobody was me leaving my comfort zone. Now, I had a dream and I, was, I had an ambition. I had something that I wanted to achieve and I was ready to leave my home to go do that. I was there by myself, but that drive was enough by itself. And me being alone, me not knowing people, me being in a different atmosphere, culture, was a catalyst to making that ambition even bigger. Now, you need to understand something. When I was in that flight school, when I was going through the motions of becoming a pilot, I did not see myself as a student going to class and hoping to become a pilot. I saw myself as a pilot already. To me, the flight school was just me reverse engineering the fact that I was already a pilot in my mind. And that is not because I felt like I was better than anybody else, not at all. It's just that I had no choice but to succeed. This is a dream that I've had since I was a child. This is a dream that I've had ever since I knew how to dream. There was no way I was going to fail this. And so I reverse engineered what it took to be a pilot into the daily things that I would do to pass all these classes, to nail these flights and do everything that I needed to do. And I remember I said that to one person and he was just like, oh, you can't think like that. And I said, okay, well, that's fine. If you, if you believe that, that's fine. But me personally, that's the way I see it. And it's the way it will be. And that's just the way you have to be. You have to put yourself first. People do not have to understand how you think. You just have to do your thing. Now, putting yourself first has had a bad connotation for a long time. And a lot of people think it is something bad to put yourself first. But it should not. There's a difference between putting yourself first and being selfish. Being selfish means you think only about yourself at the detriment of others. Putting yourself first only means that you will always fulfill your own needs and put yourself in the best position when it comes to your goals instead of letting distractions and or the needs of others impede with what you need to accomplish. Understand that putting yourself first elevates you and in turn allows you to elevate others genuinely. So at the end of the day, elevating yourself equals elevating others. You're putting people in a better position because you focused on yourself. Now initially, being alone will bring you a lot of boredom, sometimes self-doubt, but you need to observe these things and realize that they are literally catalysts to your growth. When you are alone and not constantly around people who can influence the way that you think and that you can follow when you are too lazy to come up with your own objectives, you put your own back against the wall, forcing it to find solutions without any outside help. 
boredom is uncomfortable and that is exactly where it breeds the greatest ideas and leads you to take massive action. You are not meant to always pick up your phone or your gaming console as soon as you feel the slightest bit of, the slightest bit of boredom creeping in. Self-doubt can be good because when you come face to face with it alone, you start feeling a need to prove certain things to yourself, which leads you to accomplish great things in the process and compete with yourself. And an extreme example of that is Michael Jordan. Your brain is incredibly powerful, but that power is also its greatest weakness. Let me explain. Your brain is a sponge that forms connections called synapses to make it easier to access information, memories and actions that you repeat on a daily basis and need the most. It also takes everything at face value, meaning that if you are always surrounded by people and are always doing things that are easier and make you more comfortable but are not necessarily good for you in the long term, even if you are aware of this while you are doing it, your brain will still register those as essential and a pattern will form, a routine if you will. As you engage and repeat these actions and thought processes, you will find it increasingly harder to get out of that routine because your brain solidifies everything that you do. That is called intellectual laziness and it can only be broken when you start doing and solving things on your own. You can force yourself out of this mindset at any time, but the longer you indulge in that behavior, the harder it will be. You need to do things by yourself. You need to put yourself in situations where only you can find a solution. And that will eventually 100% happen the moment you make that leap of faith and decide to go for what you truly want and not just basing your decisions on the thoughts and actions and words of other people. You need to think for yourself. We as human beings like safety. We try to avoid being in confrontation with our friends and our loved ones. We want to be in a stable position where we do not like for anything. That makes us comfortable. That makes us also predictable and that ultimately is what weakens us when the unforeseen happens. If you have the discipline to willfully be alone and cultivate a relationship with yourself, not only will you understand yourself more, but you will start understanding how high your potential value is and work to reach it. You will level up. And contrary to what a lot of people think, you will attract people, not be more alone. Because people will see you as an example that they will want to associate with, to better themselves as well. You will attract that same energy that you're putting out. Essentially, by separating yourself from certain unnecessary crowds and groups that are not compatible with who you really are as a person, you will actually create a new circle that will be on par with your mindset and your vision. But the thing about that new circle is that they will share your perception and therefore being around those new people will be an added motivation to go back and put in work on your own thing. You will be feeding off of each other and propelling each other upwards. When I was in flight school, I made friends with anybody that thought the way that I thought. Obviously, we also had personalities that were compatible. But I made friends with people that thought the way that I thought, that had the vision that I had. You know, you want to make a better life for yourself. You want your parents to be proud of you. You want to achieve that dream. So you put in the work. We create study groups. And friendships form with these study groups. We, we study together, we do things together, we become friends and we start sharing knowledge between each other. And it keeps exciting you more because when you go back to your room by yourself and you have to put in that work, you're even more motivated because you know that you're not the only person who thinks that way and because you can share information with somebody that has the same mindset as you. So you get more and more excited and that puts you in an upward spiral that just pushes you to be the best version of yourself possible. I would stay up until 4 or 5 a.m. during weekdays to study. Now, I'm not condoning like not sleeping or depriving yourself of sleep just to study. I'm just saying that's how excited I was at the idea of being good at my job, at, of being good at what I will do in the future. I saw myself as a pilot and I was putting in the work as if I already had it because I wanted it so bad. So I surrounded myself with the people that could make that happen and my productivity increased like crazy i was focused nobody could ever shake that boat immovable i knew what i wanted and i put myself in an environment where i would either be by myself or with the people that i needed around me that had that same mindset and that same vision 
being in that mind space will allow you to have laser-like focus when it comes to your objectives and you will progressively unlock your real internal dialogue. Your real work ethic will be revealed as you will be working on things that you are passionate about and that you and no one else have decided to pursue. Ultimately, you will achieve more and your productivity will skyrocket. Now, I remember one time if you are an airline pilot or you are a student pilot or you're somebody who is interested in being a pilot, you know what an ATPL is. ATPL stands for Air Transport Pilot's License. And when you are somebody who is trained to become an airline pilot, you will have to go through these exams that we call the ATPL exams. And um, basically, everybody's kind of like, kind of stressed before the exam and everything like that. And everybody's always like kind of doubting themselves when it comes to their performance in the actual exams. Now, remember one of these days when I pass. Uh, one of my exams, well, I, when I sat one of my exams, I finished the exam and I was just so confident that I had passed. This like, I had studied so much relentlessly, I remember it, and I was convinced I was going to have a high mark. Now, there's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself when you've done something good, when you've put in the work, when you've been through the process and you finish something and you're confident in your results, that is a good thing. Don't boast, but it's okay to be confident in your results and to just be proud of the work that you've done. Because that's rightfully so. You've put in the work. I was walking back to my room after that exam and I bumped into another student. And I, rem I, will, I remember this like it was yesterday. He, he asked me, how, how did the exam go? Jason, how did the exam go? I said, I killed it. I said it exactly like that. He said, really? I said, yeah. I don't think it was particularly hard. I've, I've seen uh, a lot of similar questions and it, was, it wasn't too complicated. I think, I'm, I'm confident I passed it. And he said these exact words. Wow, you shouldn't be this confident. You should not be this confident. And I remember in my head, I was like, what? <laughs> I was surprised that he told me that. You should not be this confident? okay now that's what i thought in my head i looked at him i nodded and i went on my way back to my room because i do not share your mindset sir and i do not have to and it's fine that you think that way it's fine we're different but i'm just telling you right now if i'm if i've worked like i've worked i'm i'm not expecting to leave the exam not being sure of myself because the work that i put in was to succeed it wasn't to be unsure of myself when I came out. That's why I put in so much work because I wanted to put the doubt at 1%, okay? The more you maximize your study, the more you maximize your preparation, the more the doubt is decreased. But to be able to put in that work, you need to put yourself in a mind space where only you can talk to yourself mentally. You have to be alone to stand out from others think for yourself now let me finish with this imagery your life is like a building and your potential is like an elevator each floor that you encounter is an experience now from the moment you are born your goal is to get to the hundredth floor the elevator stops at every single floor you will see people that will come into the elevator with you and start talking to you and they will be along for the ride for maybe 30 floors or 50 or 60 but at some point they will come out will you follow them or will you let the doors close and continue on your way when you get to a floor where people are doing social activities and doing things that seem interesting to you Will you enjoy the moment with them and then go back to the elevator before the doors close and go back up or will you just stay there and let the elevator go up without you? Distraction. Now what you need to understand is the elevator will never wait for you. It will always keep going. It will always keep going up. Now it is possible for you to force the doors open, jump on the rope and climb to catch up to the elevator but that will always be harder than being inside of the elevator. The elevator is your potential. And you are you. Will you be inside that elevator? 
or will you be stranded and stuck on a floor because you decided to follow the crowd and not what you wanted to do? Learn to be alone. Maximize your output. Remember, the sky is not the limit. The sky is home. Be limitless.